All right, all right, all right. So this is the Irrelevant Podcast with DQ here with a special guest today, my very good friend that I've known for a long time, Mr. J Bone D'Souza. What's up, J Bone? What's up, man? How's it going? Doing very well. So we were just talking about land down under. Can you hear? Can you hear the thunder, bro? And my thing is, if you take a song like that and you turn around and you put your own spin on it. You can make it sound good, dude. Like, you can, like, picture fucking Metallica, bro. Bob Seger, turn the page. Okay, listen to the original. Incredible. Both, both are very good. But but listen to the original, right? Right. And then, so imagine if someone, like, in Metallica, say, like, James was like, hey, you know what I'm thinking for, like, the next album? We record, uh, we, we do a cover of Bob Seger's Turn the Page. And the other guys are just like, what, what, what are we, dude? What are we? We're, we're metal. We're Metallica, bro. We're not going to cover Bob Seger. Like, you know what I mean? No. Instead, they were like, wait, how would Metallica cover Bob Seger? Like, what would what would that sound like? And then they turn around and they fucking, bam, they did it. And like you said, it's awesome. And they, it doesn't have to necessarily just be metal. Like, you look at um, Chris Cornell covers Billy Jean, you know, which like, Chris Cornell is more... Really? He covered uh, yeah. Michael Jackson? He, um, you know, Chris Cornell is more grunge, but he also has a lot of slower more solo acoustic music and his version of Billie Jean he he does a version of Billie Jean he does a version of uh, Imagine he does a version of Patience like by Guns N' Roses and he kills it every time it all depends on how good the artist is those are all all those covers from him are acoustics um not all of them oh, oh. the Billie Jean one is not uh Imagine there's an acoustic version of each one of those songs so it's pretty acoustic but i mean not enough to say like acoustic acoustic but he does have live versions of them where they are just straight up him with an acoustic guitar but uh, otherwise if you get them on like the regular albums not the live albums there uh there's a band with them and he co- he he even covered he's covered prince he's covered michael jackson he's covered uh he's covered metallica he's I- covered I saw a cover. Uh, I saw a cover of the Foo Fighters, or I heard a cover of the Foo Fighters cover in Prince, um, "Darling Nikki," and I was like, "I never even heard that." I was like, "What the hell, dude?" That's I actually like, saw dope. Miley Cyrus cover uh, "Temple of the Dog," which is Chris Cornell. After he died, they did a tribute concert. Yeah. They had Miley Cyrus up there, dude. They had fucking um, who else? Did they have. They had Metallica up there. They had you know, and they were all covering. You know, they were doing their own songs, but they were all covering his songs, too. Like, Miley Cyrus covered fucking Pearl Jam, Just Breathe. And, like, she did, you know, she's a pop singer or whatever. And she did a uh, a different, you know, like a very different version of it. But it was still really fucking good. And I think it's good that band. I think bands should do that because, so, you know, you have all these, these people, like, for example, like with the whole Miley Cyrus thing. You have all these people that like Miley Cyrus, these, you know, people that are into that kind of music, and then she goes and covers a song that's a completely different genre in her own little way. People are going to be like, oh, this song's really good. They're going to look it up, and they're going to be like, wait, this is a uh, cover, and they're going to go back and listen to the cover, and they're going to be like, this is really good. Listen to the original one, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, they listen to the original one, and they're going to be like, oh, wow, this is really good, and it's going to broaden their, you know, their music, like, perspective. And they're going to get into a lot more shit that they're not really necessarily did, into. Did you see uh, at the beginning of this uh, whole quarantine shit, um, Post Malone did a fucking whole tribute uh, to Nirvana? He did literally, it was almost, it was like a Zoom type call. It was like him, I want to say like Travis Barker, like the the drummer from Good Charlotte, wherever the fuck he was from. I don't even know what Charlotte... Charles Barkley, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, oh, yeah, I think so. Or Charles Bark, no, not Charles Barkley. I think I know, it sounds, I know what you're trying to say, but I don't know who it is. Um, anyways, they did, like, a Zoom type thing where, like, they had the drummer, and and then Post Malone was playing guitar and fucking singing, and then there was, like, a guy playing the bass, and they did, like, nothing but Nirvana songs, but it wasn't even, like, it wasn't even, like, In Bloom or fucking Smells Like Teen Spirit or, like, any of those songs. It was songs that I never even fucking heard of, dude. Like, they were doing songs from, like, Bleach and shit. A lot of, yeah, I, I heard Post Malone cover Nirvana 
when I first heard about Post Malone. That's actually how I even, like, the first time I ever heard about him was because I was, like, scrolling through Facebook, and I saw this video, and it said Post Malone covered Nirvana. This was years ago, and this is when he first got big. And, um, like, his music is nothing like Nirvana, but it's good that he, like, because a lot of these artists that play their type of music don't necessarily only listen to that type of music. Yeah. A lot of artists don't even necessarily, like, like if you ask, like, Axl Rose who his favorite band is, he's not going to say Guns N' Roses. Oh, no. Do you know who Axl Rose's favorite band was? I think it was, like, Motley Crue, right? No, no, no. no. He it fucking... Was, it, was, it was not Metallica, but I knew he... I know he used to fall asleep to, like, Fade to Black. That's what I heard. Yeah, he fell asleep. He used to fall asleep to Fade to Black, but it, it, one of the things that I read was uh, Axl Rose's favorite band was Queen. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Elton John. And Elton John, yeah. Yeah. Um, which, which, lyrically... You can kind of see, especially like the Use Your Illusions 1 and 2. Like to me, songs like Estranged or November Rain is more Elton John style. And... Yeah, yeah. But in, like, yeah, November Rain, I feel like, was like Axl Rose's Bohemian Rhapsody. Right. You Which... know what I mean? Like, like that epic, you know, song that freaking, that nobody believed could work. Or, like, you would think, like, oh, that's not going to work. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you saw the Queen movie, but yeah, how they, they were, like... Yeah, Raps, it was too long. Too long and this and that. But, like, and I'm not saying November Rain is, is as uh, epic in any Sorry. way as... Is epic any, in any way as um, Bohemian Rhapsody is, but it's it's a Guns N' Roses hit. Like, you know what I mean? He, um, even though they cut it down on the radio, for the radio, they cut out, like, a, a I think one of the solos and, like, I think, like, the outro part that goes to, like... Do you think that you need someone? Everybody needs I think they, someone. I think they like cut a part of that out. Um, but either way, it's still like a Guns N' Roses hit. Yeah, and I think after a while, they actually started playing the full song. Because what I, I noticed when I hear it on the radio, it's usually the full song, I think, anyways. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. We were talking about Guns N' Roses and fucking... How November... Oh, what I was going to say is it's pretty interesting, too, because, like, Axl Rose was super homophobic back in the day. So for his two idols to be two of the most famous, you know, gay people, which goes to show is, like, you can't you can't be ignorant to... Like, if you are if you have a band or whatever, you can't be afraid to, uh, to try different shit, you know what I mean? To go out of your comfort zone with anything, not even just being in a band with any kind of create, you know, creativity. You can't be afraid to take... Necess- I don't want to say people's work, but people's ideas, and you know, build, ch- build upon build it. Build upon right. it to or make it your own. own. Right, put your own twist on it or anything of that sort. You know, comedians do it, movies do it. You know, like, like look at that show, The Boys. I don't know if you've watched it. It's a superhero based show, and they they kind of spoof on uh, you know all the Marvel characters or DC characters, and it's a really good show, but um. Even, like, spoofs or anything like that. Like, you have to be able to take other people's ideas and share them. You know, like, people should be willing to, to share it and, like, be comfortable enough to use other people's creativity and build something else off of it. You know, like, every house is generally built the same. It's foundation. The idea of a house, the, you know, the engineering of a house in order to, to make it work. It needs a certain kind of four walls. Four, four walls, walls and a roof is and a floor is what a house is essentially. You right. Know, it's just about how it's so all about it the same how you music. go about how you go about. Right. Where you decide to put the rooms, what color you decide yeah. to paint the walls. It's like it's like anything the little, else. The little the the devils in the details. Right. You know. So I think it's I think bands more bands should do it because like there's a lot of songs that I was like because I'm a huge Chris Cornell fan. There's a lot of songs that I wish that he covered before he died and you know what it was weird because like before he died or after he died i was like damn dude i wish chris cornell covered a guns and roses song and i said i even said to somebody i think patience would be the perfect song for him to cover because he's got that very you know he's very good at putting a lot of emotion into his song and i think guns and roses like patience is such a sweet you know like kind of like love song and it's very emotional but i don't think I think Axl Rose's emotions kind of go from, like, like, I, I guess with, like, November Rain, it is pretty emotional, but, like, I don't, I didn't think Patience was emotional enough, and Chris Cornell sang it, and it, like, actually felt like 
a love song. Like, it felt like, okay, this person is in love with who they're writing a song for. Yeah, Patience... I, f- I don't know if you've heard the Chris Cornell version. Yeah, you sent it to me, actually. I heard it from you. You sent it to me over the summer. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, which it was okay. Uh, little little thing between Justin and, I, and Justin and I is I always bust his balls because I'm, I'm not really uh, the biggest Chris Cornell fan. It's not that I don't... It's not that I don't really like him. I'm just... I'm not a huge fan of his singing style. Like, he always he always sounds like he's fucking crying. And that's just kind of a turn-off to me, so I don't really... Well, that's because but, most of the songs you hear are, like, the sadder, slower songs. But he does... He's one ooh. of those... He's one of those artists that, uh... He's got a lot of range. Yeah. Like, a lot more than you can imagine, you know? Because, like, he's been in... F- four bands, you know, including his solo stuff. Yeah. Ju- just a little disclosure here. You might hear some rumbling in the background. That's not the neighbors having sex. That's uh, a thunderstorm going on outside. Um, so, Justin, how long have we known each other now? Don't touch the fucking microphone. That's rule number one, you son of a bitch. My bad, dog. This motherfucker coming over here, I told him, ah. rule number one, don't touch the fucking microphone. What does he do? He turns around and he touches the fucking microphone. Anyways, Justin, how long How long would you say that I've known you, bro? How long have we known each other? I'm trying to think. What year is it? 2020. It's 2020, unfortunately. You were, what, 17? No, younger than that, bro. I think I think I was 15 when I first met you. I think I was 15 right before, uh, like three months before I was turning 16. How old are you now? 26. So 10 years? Very close to it. Years. Yeah, I we, feel like it's been more than that because it had to be that's 2000. What, and... That's what I'm saying, bro. We met each other. We met each other. Might have even been you like your freshman year and, and I was in eighth grade or something, dude. You graduated 2011, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you you graduated a year ahead of me. Yeah, you might have been younger than that. Dude. So I mean, we've we've known each other. My point is, we've known each other for a long time. So you're you're uh, from Taunton, Massachusetts. No, no, no. You're yeah. not. You are from Taunton, but yeah. you lived in Somerset for for a while, right? No, I lived in. I was. I went from Taunton to Berkeley, and then after Berkeley, I bounced around from Somerset, Swansea, Providence, um, Fall River. Uh, New Bedford. So, so you're a vagabond, basically, mm-hmm. which fits goes right into what I was getting at, which is, um, you're here right now, from uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Michigan, Michigan slash Wisconsin, M- Michigan, was Wisconsin. It's Michigan, bas- working in Wisconsin. It's basically like what Rhode Island is to Massachusetts here, like how we're literally right. five minutes down the road and we're a mass. Where you are, you're in Michigan, but then you drive over a bridge, and I'm in and Wisconsin. You're in Wisconsin. So, um, not Small to bridge. not to get like I don't want to get super political political or anything, but like obviously, you know, you're you're uh, breaking huge, you know, restrictions right now, man. And like I just want to get your thoughts on this whole COVID shit. Here we are, ten months into the sec- into two weeks of trying to flatten the curve, dude. This is the longest two weeks of my life. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a scumbag, dude. I'm not a piece of shit. Um, I, I empathize with people and like, I don't, I don't, I'm not like one of those guys like, oh, I'm going to do whatever I want because like, fuck everybody else, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, to me, it's getting a little fucking ridiculous. So, you know, I was kind of just, uh, being a little condescending, but I was also being facetious while I was doing it saying like, you're breaking... You're breaking these restrictions by traveling from the Midwest out here. You know, who's to say, God forbid, you could have brought COVID with you. Um, what do you think, though? Because I, I think this is just getting absurd, dude. So, all right, when people fuck, right? <laughs> here we go again. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, ladies and gentlemen. Pastor Horny just entered the building. <laughs> when people fuck, they use a condom or they don't use a condom, right? They take the option of using a condom or not using a condom. Right? Why do people use condoms? Because they don't want to have kids. They don't want to get diseases. Right? But they, the cops aren't fucking being like, hey, you have to use a condom. The cops aren't worried about people spreading STDs. AIDS fucking kills you quicker, way more fucking often than COVID would. 
It's been around a lot longer. They haven't done shit about it in the past God knows how many years. 40-something, yeah, like 40 More than that, years, dude. Yeah. We're in 2020, dude. 40 years was the 80s. They're talking 60s, 70s. This shit was coming out. And so what I think is, I think the way that the best way to deal with this in order to keep everybody happy is if you have somebody back at home that's fucking old and you give a shit whether or not they die, wear a mask. Don't go out often. If you want to spend time with that old fucking loved one. But if you want to continue fucking living your life like a normal person, I think it should be an optional thing. I think you should be able to like... like. I'm not worried about the virus, right? Because I don't fucking hang out with old ass people that are going to die from it. I hang out with young people, generally speaking, like my age, that aren't too worried about it. And yeah, I mean, I'm considerate about it. Like, if you were worried about it, you said, hey, when you come into my house, you know, wear a mask. I get it. You traveled, whatever. I would. I probably wouldn't spend as much time here because I don't want to be sitting here for four hours wearing a fucking mask. But I would respect that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But like... This is supposed to be a free fucking country, and they got us running around like a bunch of fucking idiots, and like sheep, and I just, I just think, best way to deal with this is to, you know, let people live their fucking lives, let people make their money, let people go out to fucking restaurants, let people go out to bars, because when I was in Wisconsin, you don't fucking hear about the virus. Mm. Nobody knew about the virus, nobody was worried about the virus, the virus is barely even fucking in that, I was in a small town, granted, but people would go out to the bars, Till two o'clock in the morning on a fucking Wednesday. You'd go to Thursday, go out on a Thursday, and there was some days the bars were packed. There was some days there was nobody there, and not a mask in sight, right? Right, and the the you know the bars were admittedly saying, "Oh yeah, it's a lot slower." You know that everything's a little bit slower. Like we haven't had as much as much people coming out. And oh why? Oh because of the virus. Oh well that makes sense. You have the people that don't give a fuck about it, going out living their lives. Not a lot of people are getting it. And then you have the people that do give a fuck about it that are like, oh, I got a, you know, loved one at home or I'm fucking old. I don't want to get it. They don't fucking simply go out. Or have cancer or have AIDS or fucking a loved one that does or, yeah. But I mean, like, this, this, at this point, like, they should have, I mean, two weeks is like, fuck, dude. It's the government. They can't figure out shit in two weeks. I mean, I. Well, wait, hang on. Do you think? (laughs) (laughs) I go to drill, dude. And I go to drill for for drills that have been scheduled a year ahead of time, and I get there, and I'm like, what are we doing? And they say, I don't know. So obviously the government doesn't fucking know what they're doing, especially the American government. So it's we, we just have to sit around, pussyfoot around like a bunch of fucking idiots until they figure out what's going on. It should be optional. Just like everything should be optional. So to sum up, you know, let me ask, is this what you mean by that is people should have a a personal choice and then there's, just like everything else in the world, there's a consequence to their actions. Right. Uh, either it happens or it doesn't. That's that's basically what you're saying? Right. And, like, I, so there are certain, you know, there are certain exceptions. Like, the grocery store, everybody has to go to the grocery store. There's food there that people are eating. I mean, yeah, I get it. People people should wear masks in, like, a grocery store, a Walmart, or Target. They should have to wear a mask. Where it's highly populated public areas, sure. But, like, the bar, you don't have to go to the fucking bar. You do have to go to the grocery store, including, you know, those other places that you generally probably don't have to go to. But, like, people need to go to Walmart. People need to go to Target. People need to go to the fucking, you know, True Keys or Stop and Shop, whatever the fuck grocery store you have in your area. People need to go to those places. Sick people need to go to those. Old people need to go to those places. Old people aren't going to the fucking bar hanging out and drinking. The one thing, see, see, the mask, like... (sighs) Or having parties at your fucking house. I should be able to have company over regardless of how many people I want within reason. did you hear about California, them going and shutting the fucking gas and electricity off and water off at fucking houses that they heard were having parties? I didn't hear about that. That's fucked up, though. Uh, L.A. County, bro, yeah. Oh yeah, welcome to fucking dude. California is like a diff- basically a different country. It's not even. It's like basically not even. America. We go to Texas too, and they just don't give a fuck what you do over there at all. Well, because Texas, I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm again. I'm not one of these like gun toting. Oh, you know, f- f- Mer- America, whatever. But at the same time, like they got the right idea, dude. Like you do you, 
And then if that does you harm, then then I'm sorry, but that's you. But the government's not going to be there to protect you from you. Like, if you go out and you like, let's say, again, we'll go back to, like, AIDS. And you go out and you're, like, one of those sick fucks that are, like, pricking people with, like, a used needle that you used and, like, you're giving right. people AIDS. Like, that's totally different. Now you're affecting somebody else. But, like, let's say, oh, but you could be a carrier of the coronavirus and not even know it, blah, blah, blah. But, like, all right, but anybody who's worried about getting it shouldn't be... Like, and, and the masks kind of piss me off, but it's not even the masks. To me, it's the fucking, it's the vaccine, bro. It's the vaccine where these people are saying that they, they want to make it mandatory. And, and like, before you can return to work, you know, before, before your kids can go back to school and this and that. Which, the, the, with the schools, they already vaccinate the fuck out of the kids anyways. You got to get all the shots. So that, I'm not surprised. I got nothing to say about that. That Nothing's going to change that. But as far as, like, just an adult, you, an adult, right? Uh, you got to get the vaccine before you can return to work. I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with that, dude. I don't fucking like the government telling me. I thought it was my body, my choice. I thought it was my body, my choice. What happened to that? Well, dude, the I, thing I mean, is, too, is like the, the, the thing with any kind of, you know, pandemic or epidemic or anything like this happens, you know, anything, anything at all that the government throws at us and infringes on our freedoms or our pursuit of happiness... Um, there's always a lot of fear thrown at us without enough answers. We have all these questions and no answers. Oh, hey, the, the, it's, the government throws at us, hey, this is virus. It's very contagious. It is somewhat deadly to some people. Okay. Well, what else is going on? What's going on with the vaccine? What does the vaccine, what does the vaccine actually do? Who's working on it? What else does what, it have how, in it? Well, how close are we to it? What is it going to do to me? How is it going to affect me? How is this virus going to affect me? How deadly is this virus actually? Can we get real fucking numbers? Instead of just all these people running around saying, Oh, yep, we have to mark you have the coronavirus. The, you came in here with respiratory issues now. You know, it's probably the coronavirus. Probably. The, the coronavirus is a strand of the flu. The fact that they call it the coronavirus and not the corona flu is bullshit. It's just a different... You know, every time you get the flu shot, it's never the same shot. It's no, never the, the same shit. No, because every flu every year comes... It's different. Right. It, it evolves. It's, we we co-evolve and there. The ex, that's what I was gonna, just going to bring up was the experts are already saying corona's never going to go away. It's going to be, be like a flu that's going to co-evolve with us for the rest of time. Right. We, us like, meaning humanity. Okay, polio, smallpox, measles. We eradic almost basically eradicated right, those. those three diseases, right? Because they are just one in itself. Polio is polio. Measles is measles. The other one, is whatever the fuck I just said, is the other one. Um... But the coronavirus is just a flu. That's all it is. It's just the flu. And there's so many fucking different variations of the flu. The flu is such a broad fucking, you know, category. Dude, speaking of the flu, not to, not, not to cut you off, dude, but, but speaking of the flu, it's supposedly down 98% from what it was a year ago and the and meanwhile this is corresponding with the corona the quote unquote new coronavirus spikes flu's down 98%. So you're trying to tell me the flu has basically just disappeared from last year to this year. It has been around for thousands of years. Right, and the coronavirus And it's just gone. It's just uh, the coronavirus like that. just came and bitch slapped it out of out of existence. I don't believe no. it. So how many of these new corona cases are actually the common flu, well, you, which can kill the the flu has actually killed more people than the coronavirus actually even just not obviously over time because it's been around a lot longer, but meaning every year the flu has killed dude, more I people just, than coronavirus. I just don't understand when the fuck did the government just decide out of nowhere that they were going to care about our livelihood. They when did they, they... sell cigarettes? Yep. They sell alcohol. Yep. Then they're worried about fucking weed. Listen, they don't want to make weed legal, but they make cigarettes legal. People die horrible fucking deaths from cigarettes. They make vaping illegal, which vaping has gone through many of tests to prove that it's significantly less harmful than cigarettes. And they, in some states they made it illegal. But yet they keep cigarettes legal, right? So it's like, 
cigarettes are fucking the worst thing for you. They're more addictive than heroin. They kill you fucking... They, they kill more people than heroin. But granted, there are more people that smoke than do heroin. Yeah, of course. But, like... Why are they all of a sudden because so worried about you it? You could say, though, it's also because it's more widely available because it's sold legally. Like, meaning nicotine versus right, something well, like heroin. Right. I could literally go to the store. Even a kid could go wait outside of the store and be like, yo, hey, man, could you buy me a pack of cigarettes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, versus, like, you'd have to, like, know someone who knows someone well, to be I able mean, to get the, some dope. You know what I mean? Cigarettes don't infringe, uh, generally speaking, don't infringe on your life as much as those heavier drugs do. Um, you know, like, you're not, like... If you don't fucking smoke a cigarette, you're not going to get deathly ill like somebody that's withdrawing off of heroin. But no, I, could, I could potentially kill you, though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. But it's so stupid that all of a sudden they care about people's health because, you know. Like, all of a sudden they want to be our fucking, our, our lord and savior, our, I was, our, our fucking shepherds. Go I ahead. was watching this comedian, and he was saying that there were actually, and I don't know how true this was. I saw this video fucking a couple hours ago before you picked me up. And he was saying that um, there are people that actually went to the hospital because of corona. They looked at their hospital bill, and their hospital bill was $1.9 million. Nice. nice. How does a country care about somebody's health and charge them $1.9 million because they have a glorified well, fucking cold? Well, that, not to get, like, super... It, it, into po- political there, but that's not the gov. But the p- hospitals as a private sector, it's not the government. Uh, like you know, what but I it mean? is the government that doesn't p- give us free health care. Yeah, but it, it's uh, see, I don't want to get into that, dude, because I'm I don't because I think I don't think we g- will agree on that, dude, because I don't think free health care is all as chalked up to be. But I but but I but I know what you're saying. Here's what we got to do. Meaning so- meaning like wait, like they. They let us, and that's the whole, and honestly, the whole thing that you just said about the cigarettes and this and that, whatever, that's what this country was basically founded upon, was like, like I said earlier, you make your fucking choices. I pick up this fucking cigarette that's in my hand right now, and I have this lighter in my other hand, and I put it to my mouth and I light it, that's my own choice. It shouldn't be illegal for me to fucking do so because the government wants to be my daddy. So, the freedoms in this country, the thing that people say, America is such a free country. The freedoms in this country aren't aimed towards you and I. The freedom in this country circle around the higher power people. And there's so many things to prove that. For example, you know, you said you don't want free health care, right? Why? So when people say they don't want free health care, right? Because nothing is free. If you want health care yeah. somewhere, that money has to come from. And it's got to yeah. come from us. So what's going to happen? People say, oh, well, our taxes will go up, right? Which they will. Most of your taxes... Go to the military, right? Uh, most of the government's money is, other than paying You're these, about other right than now. paying these bitch ass politicians, goes to the military. And being in the military, I know it doesn't go to me. Don't forget about don't forget about fucking it, foreign foreign uh, nations. We pay them to right. It goes to the equipment. It goes to making sure that we are the most powerful country in the world. This, the, your money is going to making power. That's all it is. It's making the rich more powerful. The people that run this country want to make sure that they can run this country. So with a powerful government, with a powerful military, we don't have to worry about all these other countries coming in here or or doing all that other shit. And they're worried about themselves. When they could take, not all of it, but they could take a good portion of that money, still be the most powerful fucking military in the world, just based off our numbers and our training and the people that want to fight for this quote-unquote free country, they could take a lot of that money, not change taxes at all, just distribute the money in different ways and make our lives a lot better. So here's the... All right. Th- we're going to get into this now. So because my whole thing is you already said it. I didn't even, I didn't even say it. You actually said my argument against quote-unquote free health care. Like you already explained, it's not free, but... You you said the government you, the government specifically the American government is not to be trusted with planning anything, coordinating anything, making sure anything runs smoothly. So why would we expect the government to run healthcare way better than it's are being run privatized when all they're gonna do is cap how much doctors can make, how much nurses can make, how much by 
capping how much they can charge, which in which I agree there should be. It's it, it's a fine line to walk because when you start telling people, hey, you can only make X amount for this, now you're stepping into that fucking socialized healthcare world. Eh, I don't know about that, but. At the same time, yeah, one point something million dollars. Oh, you had COVID. Oh, it was a false thing. Well, well, like that's yeah, that's fucking bullshit. Or like, uh, eight grand for an ambulance ride. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, I do understand that. But at the same time, it's like, why would we think the government is going to do a good job of that? They run public schools horribly. They run public schools horribly, disgustingly horribly. That gets the the funds get misappropriated. With fucking even, even the VA, like, which is like, you know what I mean? Has something to do with the military, you know what I mean? Boom, you're talking about, that's socialized healthcare right there. The VA's been run fucking horribly for the last, like, 40 years, dude. Uh, the government, literally, in my opinion, can't really do much right. So why would we give them even more power? You talking about, or not just, not you, but meaning people talking about socializing healthcare or giving free healthcare, this and that, is giving the government even more power. So... The, some of the richest, you know, Massachusetts is one of the most wealthiest states, right? When I say one of the most wealthiest states, I mean yearly income through, you know, the people, right? How much each person makes a year. Massachusetts also has the cheapest health care. Some of the cheapest health care in the country. Also one of the smartest states in the country. Not talking up Massachusetts a lot, but some of the shit they do have figured out. When, wait, so... I'm sorry, not to interrupt you. No, go ahead, you finish, because I... So, Massachusetts... Ahead. Right. Good. Cheaper wealth care. Yep. Wealthier people. Yeah. Cheap, cheaper health care, wealthier people. Yeah. It goes hand in hand. If if health care was cheaper, people would be able to, you know, oh man, I can't go to the fucking dentist. I can't do this. I can't afford to do that. Oh, I'm not even going to. So many motherfuckers would rather call an Uber to the hospital than fucking call an ambulance because it's so much fucking money. Massachusetts did the whole free health care, and we're one of the wealthiest states. But there, yeah, it has to. There, ha- that has to mean something. Well, that's what I was gonna ask you. Was what do you mean by like lowest lowest uh, health costs? Like you mean like how much they're charging per thing, or you mean like the insurance much, rates? The insurance rates are good. The insurance rates are cheaper, and it's yeah. cheaper. Medicine is cheaper. Um, just med- medically all around. So it do you is know? Cheaper. Do you know how that happens? And I'm not saying this is how it happened in Massachusetts, but generally on on a general level, how that happens is. The free market, which is literally the opposite of socializing something, is that you allow the insurance companies to get in business, you allow the insurance companies to compete with each other, to kind of basically lowball each other, and then the rates can get lower and lower and better and better. The drugs can, uh, the same thing with the drug companies, whatever. Also, you got to understand, too, is as much as America's health care costs on average, like meaning for the entire country, we are also the world's leading innovator in. Almost everything when it comes to healthcare, meaning like production of drugs, uh, and that's all from the private sector. None of that is run by the government. You know what I mean? When it comes to people's health, right? Because you could be poor, you could be fucking homeless, you could be any of that. But the one thing I've learned from being homeless is that the one thing, the most important thing in on the face of this earth is your health. Because you can have zero dollars... But if you can breathe and your heart's beating, you can still turn zero into something. You can still turn nothing into something. So, And it's a lot easier. So if the government focused more on keeping people healthy... Ooh, sorry. It's okay. If the government focused more on keeping people healthy, then fucking it would be better. And now all of a sudden, they're worried about this fucking virus, and they're just making money off of it. Well, well let me ask you this. So do would you trust the government would you think they would do a good job I don't job? trust the government to do fucking anything So but do you think they would do a good job if you if you did if they did what you said which is take tax money divert it some of it from the military and then establish a socialized health care kind of almost like what Obama did but they didn't divert any money from the military if anything he spent way more money on the military and then increased taxes to do the whole Obamacare thing which mad people lost insurance because they were quote unquote wealthy when they were actually middle class which is another thing they're trying to do is to eliminate the middle class but anyways um like kind of like what you were saying the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, and then there's no such thing as a middle class. 
because why the fuck would you want to be considered middle class when you get taxed way more, lose your health care, this and that, when you literally only you make just under $100,000 a year, but Joe Blow down the street, someone like me delivering pieces for Domino's makes 30000 a year, so you know I'm quote-unquote in poverty while that guy's quote-unquote rich. Anyways, I, I just got wicked sidetracked. Um, but if the government was to do what you suggested... Do you think they'd actually do a good job? Because I don't. Like you just said, you, you like I don't trust them to do a good job with it. No, I, like I said, I don't trust the government to do a good job with anything. As long as they did it that way, though, like so, you need to, things need to be regulated. But the thing is, is they're regulating the wrong fucking things, dude. They they're regulating things to make the rich to keep the rich richer, you know, to make it so they can make more money. But if they were more considerate and more actually gave a fuck about people. And they regulated it the right way. I mean, yeah, I don't think the government would do it the right way. But they could do it the right way. The thing is, too, with, like, you saying, like, if the government were to do it, they would start regulating, like, what doctors were being paid and stuff like that. The thing is, is, like, a lot of these doctors are getting paid outrageous amounts of money, right? They're getting paid a lot. How many people do you know? I mean, you probably don't know a lot of people, because I don't know a lot of people that are fucking doctors. But a lot of these doctors do it for the money. The money is good. That's what makes well. part of the military. That's what makes the military more volunteer. Is because the pay in the military is shit. <coughs> so if you know anybody that joins the military, they're doing it for you know either to better themselves or actually doing it for what they think is for their country. But like so, if you, I'm not saying you should pay doctors less, but if you kind of take away from like the whole idea of like doctors are making a shit ton of money a lot of more of them will go into it because they actually want to help people mm, as opposed to I, making a paycheck i disagree with that i disagree with that if you look at if you look at any socialized healthcare country there's actually way less doctors per capita because there's way less incentive to go become a doctor because you make less money. And think about this. The student loans and the cost for medical school is not any cheaper in any of those countries. They don't do they don't <laughs> they don't do they don't make exceptions for someone who wants to go out and save the world. So so hear me out real quick. Hear me out. Doctors here in America think about how much money it costs just to go to college, just to be a fucking an Go work at Domino's afterwards with the fucking certificate or some shit, right? Think about how much money it costs. Now think about how much money it costs to become a doctor. You gotta go, not only do you do all that shit, you gotta go do your fucking, whatever they call that, um, where you go and you fucking work for free, basically. at uh, re- intern. Yeah, internships, right? For years, you go to school for years, you get rack up all those things. Uh, they don't, I don't, I think I heard something where, like, doctors don't actually start making money until almost 10 years into their practice, like, like, because they they're paying off their student loans that whole time. And I'm not saying so... they should make a shit ton less money, but you have all these pharmaceutical places that are making mm. fuck tons of oh, money. Oh, pharmaceutical companies totally different ball game, bro. I'd probably agree with you more uh, with the pharmaceutical companies. The drug, you the, know, the like, pharmaceutical industry is, just, is totally different. There's just so much leeway between what they're allowing to happen. And what could happen? There's so many smarter ways. Why is the fucking government, the you know we owe we owe trillions of dollars to whoever the fuck else? Oh, China owns us, bro. Obviously, they're not the best at budgeting money. Countries should be run by a Jew. We should probably have a Jew be our president. Oh because boy. that's it. We gotta scratch the whole podcast now. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> fucking YouTube's gonna ban this one. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, but like. The government is like fucking horrible. Like, I, shit, dude. I'm better with money than the fucking government is. And the thing is, is like, it's not even their fucking money. It's oh, oh, our money. Exa- yeah, no, you're absolutely, you're 100 It's like you're having right. a friend that's like, hey, dude, pay me some money if every week and I'm going to make your life he, slightly better. Hear me out, though. He- hear me out real quick. So what if, imagine a world where where you could make enough money... And have enough money in your pocket where you could have your own health insurance. Not provided by the state, not for free, not on, not having your taxes also go up along with everybody else's to pay for it. You can pay for it on your own, right? It might not be full coverage, might not cover fucking whatever, like, you know what I mean? But but you got coverage, okay? 
And imagine if that is achieved through taxes actually being cut. And now you think, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? Because now, you know what I mean? You, you, people probably be more aligned with what you were saying, like diverting things like, oh, yeah, don't raise the taxes, just divert, like, you know, keep the taxes the same, whatever. No. How about actually cut the taxes? Hear me out. Cut taxes on a federal level, okay? Yes. Sorry, Congress. That means you, you don't get that fucking 400th raise in, since the, the last uh, 60 years you've been in office. I'm sorry. Um, yes, there will be uh, some things that will be cut, like well, the welfare state, uh, which... What, well, oh, but what happens to all those people? Well, guess what? They can go out, get better jobs. Companies will do better. And then they turn around. They can actually fucking maybe start up their own fucking business, right? Because they actually make a fucking decent amount of money because the government, along with their own state government, isn't taking around 30 Forty percent of their fucking money that they're earning every single week, and then they they don't even why work overtime because then you get pushed up into a higher bracket, and then you get taxed even more. So then you get even less money in your paycheck. Why the fuck would you do that? The welfare state has done nothing but to incentivize people to sit down. Even this whole quarantine, I've made more money. I've made more money sitting at home than I've ever made in my entire life working, oh, and that is dude. that is disgusting, dude. That is fucking dis. Gusting, dude, and I've worked 80-hour weeks, okay? 80-hour weeks, and I could never have imagined to see the kind of paycheck. I go, oh, well, that's because you're not a electrician, or you're not a doctor, or you're not a whatever. Okay, yeah, well, guess what? Fuck you. M my point is, I'm a fucking hard-working motherfucker. Yeah, I'm sitting here s scrubbing my pennies together. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I make my own personal choices. Yeah, you know, I could uh, save my money better, whatever. That Again, it goes down to personal choices. I'm not saying that. My point is, what if I actually have more money in my fucking check? What if I actually made, saw more of the money? My money, like you said, my money that I earned that they didn't take more of. Like people are talking like, oh, $15 for minimum wage is crazy. It, 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 but it, it's like... It is crazy, dude. Fifteen dollars for minimum wage after taxes is only fucking twelve dollars. You now. realize? Do you know what minimum wage was? I think it was the sixties. You realize they're just gonna raise the taxes with that, right? Well, well, just listen to this. Minimum wage back in the day was like, I think it was like, I don't know, it was like anywhere between three and five dollars. I knew the numbers a couple days ago, and I just they slipped my mind. A long time ago, minimum wage was a very small amount of money. Yeah. It was like between three and five dollars. Yeah. It's equivalent to twenty-four dollars an hour now. But yeah, that's with inf inflation. That's inflation, yeah. Right. So inflation is going up. So people are making almost half the amount of money now. But bro, you realize? You realize? You all right? Say minimum wage here is twelve bucks. Okay, but all right. Say federal. Say federal fifteen dollars minimum wage. Mm -hmm. You realize what that does? All that does, that does nothing, nothing but push everybody into the higher tax brackets. Because if you don't change, listen to me, if you don't change the tax brackets, then now you're in that middle class area. Because now you go from making well, $40,000 a year to $75,000 a year, and now you're quote unquote wealthy. Well, you're looking that's, at it as like, that's you're looking at it as like, oh, I can just, uh, I, I'm just going to change one thing. No, with with changing anything, you need to change everything. You need to move things around. They would tax Obviously, us more if we get made fifteen dollars right, an hour. But they don't fucking have to. But that's they, what I'm you, saying. But you realize they would. They're already, right, right, right. I'm saying in a perfect yeah. world. Uh, I'm saying what the government hey, should do. You know, I'm saying what the government could do to benefit <laughs> us as a country, Ju make us happier, Ju make us better. Justin, you know what happened to the guy who originally came up with the idea of utopia in like the 1500s or what? something like that? He went up to the king and he proposed his plan of the perfect world. And you know what the king did? Had him fucking decapitated right there on the spot, bro. Executed right, I'm, I'm because, saying... Because... <laughs> Go ahead. But the thing is, is like, it's only out of the realm of possibility because we allow it to be. So that leads me back. That goes full circle back to what I was going to say before was it all comes down to trust. Can you trust the people in power? Can you trust anybody with power to not let power corrupt them? Because what do they say? Uh, power Corrupts, corrupt power. I don't fucking know. Cor uh, whatever. I don't know. Right. Like, look at say. somebody like Jeff Bezos, right? Absolute power, absolutely corrupts. Jeff Bezos is getting power, to the absolutely. point. Once you hit a certain amount of money, once you make a certain amount of money, you're not making money anymore. 
you're making power. You're you're just becoming more powerful. All you that's that's it. Like Jeff Bezos is to the point where he can literally has enough money to literally support the entire country. If he gave if does he that, just does that make him a bad guy though? Doesn't make him a good guy. But like he worked for that money though. He didn't like kill somebody and take that money. He like started that company in his garage. I'm not defending Jeff Bezos. Like okay, I'm just playing so devil's advocate right now. If like, you see does a that homeless make him person, a bad guy? like if you turn around in your way where you are right now, like you were homeless, mm -hmm. and then now you were in the military, and then now you are where you are right now, and you turned around and you worked your ass off, and if started I... a company in your mom's garage or in your garage in w Michigan, and built up a company like that, does that make you a piece of shit? No. What makes me a piece of shit is if I saw somebody in the same position and didn't help them out. Well, yeah. That's what makes me a piece of shit. If So I am where I am today because I had people that helped me. Some of them were strangers. Some of them were people that loved me. Some of people that cared about me. Some of them were even people that hated me. But I had people help me out. Jeff Bezos is the richest person on the planet. You have a, you have and a, he's not doing shit to help out the people that are putting food on his table. You ever order from Amazon, bro? Oh, fuck yeah. He's helped you out, dude. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like... You lying sack of shit, you prime holding motherfucker. I do, I have a prime hey, account. I'll admit, and I Jeff don't Bezos, this motherfucker sitting there talking mad shit about Bezos as he's paying him right now. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Fuck you, Jeff, here's my money, <laughs> take it. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, dude, so my point is, is like, he's just gaining power, dude. He can 100% share that wealth. I'm not saying, oh, here's all my money. But is he, Give ob yeah, but is he obligated to? I don't think he is, man. I think, again, that's one thing, just to keep, this is like going to be the theme of this. I might just title this whole episode is personal choice, dude. It all comes down to personal choice. Does that make, like you said, does that make him a piece of shit if he doesn't choose to? Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. But I don't think, in, in my opinion, I don't believe that he should be forced to to even help someone like me, who is that complaining motherfucker rubbing two pennies together, broke ass bitch. You know what I mean? Well, no. In in a in an absolute free country, if you know people are oh people have the freedom to be cunt bags, sure. Mm. But like, at the same time, dude, it's so the government just does so much shit, just so much. Fun. You park on the side of the road, you're not supposed to park. How much is a ticket? 60? 100? I don't live in the city, bro. I try not. I don't well, regardless. You no, live in yeah. the city, right? In the city, there's a lot of unwell... You know, there's a lot of... No parking anywhere at any time. People in poverty. Yeah. I've gotten, I've gotten uh, tickets for parking on my own fucking road outside of my own fucking apartment and the fucking parking ticket was $100. Because you didn't... Well, let me guess, because you needed like an overnight sticker and you didn't have a fucking overnight sticker. No, because sticker. I was at fucking drill for two weeks. Oh. They put up a sign... For fucking two days after I had already left, but saying don't park here because they were gonna do road work, and then two days later gave me a ticket. I was gone for two weeks. You're lucky, so they, you're lucky they didn't four tell days, you shit. <laughs> four days out of the sixteen days I was gone, my car was parked. The other twelve days, my car was in a part. It was in a in a got towed. Oh, it did get towed. Yeah, nice. I came back to a <laughs> I came back to a seven hundred dollar bill. Of course. Right, and there was no way I could have avoided that because of the shit was. Well, my point is, is these powerful people mm -hmm. are just taking money from people, taking money from people. Now you're talking about, but see, but you got to make a separation between powerful people in the private sector and the powerful people in the government. Mind you, a lot of them are in bed with each other when you come to talk about lobbying and such. Where especially like when it comes down to actual regulations and shit. Jeff you know Bezos know I mean? is Jeff Bezos is the richest person in the world, which makes him the most powerful person in the world. This virus was promised two weeks. We're now 10 months in. You know who's made the most money off of it? Hey. Jeff Bezos, right? Living the American dream, bro. So I'm not going to fault so the guy. People I are quote-unquote dying from this, right? 1%, yeah, 1%. Okay. Well, enough that they're fucking making a big deal about it. People's livelihoods are at cost because of this virus. Yeah, that's more of a fucking bigger pandemic, if you ask me, but go ahead. And somebody is sitting on his couch, jerking off his cock, and making money off of it. No, he's paying He's paying someone. He's paying, probably. 
Right. He's paying. He's paying a, a girl or or five or six to to do that for him. Well, whatever. Regardless, he's making fucking money off of this money that you can't even fathom. It would take you a lifetime to count every single one of his dollars. So I'm glad that you circled back to the 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 virus real quick. Not to like totally switch subject, but the thing is, I really don't want to talk about this shit the whole time. Yeah. Because we are gonna wrap up in a little while. I want to talk about some other shit, but just to wrap up on the virus real quick is I had a point earlier, and when it comes to the whole vaccine thing, my thing is once it comes out, everybody who wants it should not only have accessibility to it, like for free, um, you know, and uh, they should be lined up just like they will be to get it. You know what I mean? All excited, posting that shit on Instagram and Facebook. Look at me. I, I, I'm I vaccinated. Watch, I, I guarantee you, bet me $20 right now, they'll have a fucking sticker that says, I'm vaccinated. I swear to God. The, like the I voted sticker? The, the I voted sticker. I swear to God. Right now, they're going to have an I, I, I'm vaccinated sticker, okay? And people are going to be posting that shit with selfies all over Facebook. And that's great. And I believe that they have the absolute right to choose that, to do that. But I also believe that after that is done, we should be returning to some kind of normalcy in this fucking country. Because if you're vaccinated, then what do you have to worry about? If you're vaccinated and we're still social distancing and we're still wearing a fucking mask in stores or in closed areas, whatever. I mean, I don't wear a fucking mask outside, dude. We're on the open air. And I don't really get that close to people. So if you're that worried about me not wearing a mask when I'm across the street from you outside... I'm sorry, I'm just not going to do it. But like you said earlier, in the stores, whatever, okay, fine. If we're still doing that, then I want to go back to work, dude, full time. I want to go back to my fucking job. I want the the country to open back up because then everyone's going to say, oh, yeah, but we didn't mandate the vaccine. We didn't order everybody to get it. Hey, guess what? You chose to get it. I chose not to get it. And guess what? And guess what? Leave it at that. You shouldn't be worried about it. You got the vaccine. What's the problem? It goes back to choosing to wear a mask you, and choosing to go out. But here's my thing. You got the vaccine, so what are you worried about? You shouldn't be worried. You're vaccinated, right? Oh, but the vaccine is 100%. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again? But the vaccine is 100 Oh, well, that's why I don't want to get the fucking vaccine because God knows what else they fucking put in it. But that's your choice. That's your choice. Anyways, Justin, I love you so much. We're going to stop talking about this political shit. I... I I I agree. I mean, well, we can start I, I, a different one to talk about someone else. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. It's okay. Um, the I don't agree with a lot of the things, and it's not that I don't necessarily. It's not like I disagree. Whatever. I respect your viewpoint. You know what I mean? And um, and I just I hope that you can respect like where oh, I'm coming sure. from too. But let's talk about. You know what I want to talk about right now, Justin? Because I I want to go for maybe like another like half an hour or so. Well, what I want to talk about is. Some some old times, dude. Some fucking some shit. So we, uh, Justin and I, J Bone here. We were having this conversation off air about my wedding. Justin, you remember my wedding? It was absolutely insane. W- what do you recall about that day, dude? I recall being at drill, dude. That's what I recall. You, you mean you weren't at my wedding? I wasn't. Oh shit! Unfortunately. So uh, apparently. Justin was not at my wedding. He said he didn't even get an invite. He said he felt he felt like a fucking like the dog at Thanksgiving, not even getting the leftovers thrown under the table. Sorry, bro. The, I got told about this shit at drill when I was asked why I wasn't fucking there. <laughs> That's when I got told. That's when I got my invite. Twenty minutes, twenty minutes before my wife walked down the fucking aisle. They like, said, "Yo, where are you at, bro?" I'm like, "Fucking drill. What do you? Where, where am I at? What do you mean?" This motherfucker said, I'm getting married today. You're not coming to my wedding? <laughs> hey, I'm finding out about this shit now. What do you mean? No, I ain't going to your fucking wedding. Oh, shit. So, yeah, we've known each other for fucking, for a long time, dude. And, I, and I'm and i not going to lie. When I first met you, bro, I did not like you, dude. Dude. I did not, I did not like you really. Like, it's not, I didn't like, I wasn't like, yo, fuck this kid. Like, like, I, I hate this kid. It was more just like, kind of like a disdain, disdain for you. Like, I was just like, yo, like. Fuck this kid. <laughs> it was more like that. I'd rather you dislike me than like me than most of my family, which is like they loved me and now they fucking dislike me. So I guess I'm doing all right with you. My father used to like me at some point, Damn, believe bro, it or not. I was trying to make it all lighthearted. You went all fucking <laughs> child psychologist on me over here, dude. 
the fucking you started laying down on my couch and shit. Nobody likes me when they first meet me. They say I'm too much. I'm too honest. I'm too. Uh, what's the word? They they don't understand me. I have people all the time like this girl, this married chick that I was fucking in Wisconsin. She's like split up, married. She's like half married. Oh, I thought you said this Mary chick in Wisconsin. No, I was like, married. I was like, Mary's gonna be pissed that you name dropping her. Right? So, <laughs> fucking, she's like, oh, I'm gonna try to figure you out. I said, bitch, don't even try to figure me out. Dude. Good luck. Right, that's what I said. I said, ask anybody fucking back home to describe me. They've known me my whole life. They still don't. They still, they still don't understand. Don't even, they still stop. They stopped trying to. You'll only figure me out when you stop trying to figure me out. And then you're just gonna be like, "Oh, he is who he is. That's it. That's the kind of person." I'm. And a lot of people don't like it at first because I don't necessarily follow under the normalcy that people would. You know, I'm I'm too open right away. So. Can I can I be you said you like to be honest and blunt and all that. Can I be uh frank with you right now? Sure. All right. So, when I first met you, you were to your credit, we were young. Like we discussed earlier, we were young. Mhm. Um you were this skinny little scrawny lanky fucking kid, right? Tall. I'm looking up at you. And the one word that I that like if you were to ask me back then, like after like the first couple of times of meeting you, especially the first time, dude. If 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 you were to be like, yo, what do you think about J Bone? The first word that come to my mind is annoying, dude. Oh, fuck mad yeah. annoying, bro. You were like so fucking annoying, dude. It was it was retarded. And at first, if you know, like you meet people who do that, like the class clown type. And I know, I already know that that was you. Oh, sure. <laughs> I already yeah. know that that was you. But even though we didn't go to school together, but um. I freaking, I could tell that, you, you meet some people who wear, the class clown is kind of almost like an, an act that they do, and at first I'm thinking like, that's that was your whole thing, was like, oh, here's this kid, like he's just acting like a fool, and then like, over, it was like five, six, seven, ten hours after hanging, like with hanging out with you, dude, and like you're still going, and I'm like, nah, he, he's not acting a fool, dude, he's just a fucking fool, like this, this fucking kid is just straight up, like, like the jester, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, but getting to know you, the the craziest thing to me was, you know, you're, you're dropping all these crazy, like, the shit that would come out of your mouth, right? It would blow my fucking mind. But the cherry on top is, ladies and gentlemen, this man does not smoke marijuana. He's never smoked marijuana, at least not, not that I've ever seen and not that I know of. And he does not drink. He did not drink back then. You know, I, I was getting fucked up. Me and my cousins, we were getting fucked up, drinking, smoking. And here'd be J-Bone, the most fucked up out of all of us, sober off his ass, dude. Just high off life. Literally, fucking, I've never seen somebody so stoned from fucking nitrogen, oxygen, and fucking... Helium? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know, dude. Um... So, that, even to this day, dude, I mean, now you vape because you're a little bitch, and you you got one of those box mods. I was just listening to a podcast the other day, they were like, oh, oh, yo, shout out to B for his podcast, uh, Low Society. They they were talking about, oh, uh, you see someone vaping with a box mod, and it's like, ew, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you're, st- <laughs> you're stuck in fucking 2010 over here, bro. Hey, um, dude, I don't give a fuck. Nah, so... I want you to tell me a story, Justin. We're going to keep going here. This story I've heard many times and to the point where, like, I feel like I was there, but I wasn't. Tell everybody the story about the Swansea Mall. So you were throwing gift cards around. I had this friend that taught me how to throw cards, gift cards, playing cards, whatever the case may be. Anything flat, it was flying. Right. <laughs> Anything flat, we could weaponize. So... We go to the Swansea Mall, the mall in our area, and a couple of them might start spreading the knowledge of all this shit, and we're walking around. I am wearing Spongebob pajamas that I got off of this chick that I was sleeping with, because I was with her the night before, and I had nothing to wear the next day, because I was homeless at the time. And we go to the Swansea Mall. We're fucking off. I steal... 
a stack of probably 30, 40 gift cards from Dunkin' Donuts. SpongeBob pajama pants, dude. <laughs> and, you know, people tend to feed off of my chaos, so my best friend decides it's a good idea, along with myself and the two other people that I was with, it's a good idea to start throwing these things across the mall. My friend straight up throws a gift card at the kiosk. It whips around the kiosk like the fucking Wanted movie with Angelina Jolie. Hits this bitch on the side of the fucking face. We don't even see it hit her. We just know it hit her. <laughs> and we hear just, the impact. <laughs> we just keep walking. Casually walk out of the mall. We turn around and security is chasing us out the door. Threatening to call the cops on us because... Apparently, we assaulted somebody with a Dunkin' Donuts gift card, which mm. is apparently against the law. <laughs> you're 16 who, years old. Who knew? Right. When you're 16 years old, who knew? So security comes out, and they say, you threw a gift card at somebody. I said, that was not us. They say, you have a stack of gift cards in your hand. I said, that, that's not enough evidence. That's pure coincidence. Yeah. They said, the lady specified a tall... Brown kid wearing SpongeBob pajamas. I said that could be fucking anybody. With the chip tooth of the time too. Okay, with the fucking chip tooth. He said that could be fucking. That could be fucking anybody. What are you talking about, dude? Oh my god, I love it. I fucking love it. The, honestly, man, you're 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 a good guy. You are. You know, I. To some I, people, sure. I gotta, I gotta bust your balls though. Every every once in a while, dude. Here's the thing about being. A fool, quote unquote. Yeah, you're, he he's really not. He's really not stupid or anything. When when you do that, when you funny or when you're easygoing and stuff like that, makes people comfortable. At first, they're not used to it, but afterwards, they realize that's the kind of person you are. Makes them comfortable. Makes them open up to you. When a person opens up to you, you can get a lot from them. Not saying I do it in a in a manipulative type of way, but People trust you more when you're open like that and you're just yourself. And a lot of people are afraid to be like that. They fear of what people may think. But the thing is, is like, people are selfish. The fact that these people are going around acting a certain way because they're afraid of what people may think is just the most arrogant thing in the world. Nobody actually gives a fuck. And I... when you realize that and you can joke and say whatever the fuck you want... Your life is much easier, much happier. And then people feed off of that and they realize this kid actually doesn't give a fuck. And then they're like, I like that. I can be, I cannot give a fuck around him. I'm comfortable. He's open. Yeah. I trust him. Yeah. People do. People trust me with the craziest shit. Uh, honestly, dude, my, I agree with you 100%. Is like, who gives a fuck? Even about, not even, not even, who gives a fuck about what other people think about you? Who gives a fuck what you think? Ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is called The Irrelevant Podcast for a reason. It's my podcast. Everything I say on here is fucking irrelevant. Everything that Justin just said, everything we've talked about in this last hour and five minutes, six minutes here, is irrelevant. Nobody gives a fuck. I have my opinions you have yours. You know how many times I open up Facebook, I start writing, 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 writing. It's actually good therapy. And then I never click the fucking post button because then I there's like a, an epiphany, a moment of epiphany. It's only a brief second, but it's also beautiful. And, and I sit there and I think to myself, who gives a fuck? Like, who fucking cares? I do. You do. Like, like meaning me. But other than that, who cares? Who cares, dude? And 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 that's that's the bottom line, cause fucking Stone Cold said so, you know. And the best thing about being a fool is you can literally get away with murder. People forgive you for shit. People just are like, oh, that's just who he is. I literally oh. killed somebody. Literally killed somebody. He didn't stay dead, but I killed him. Jesus Christ, dude. And it was an accident. You know, kind of. Um, but he didn't stay dead, and I didn't get in trouble for it. So, the cops didn't get involved. Everything was the cool. The cops didn't get involved. I was only 12 years old. He had epilepsy, rib issues that I didn't know about. 
I may or may not have hit him in the chest a little bit harder than I should have, handing him a piece of paper, and he had a seizure, and he died. He didn't stay dead. They zapped his ass back to life, and he's fine. The teacher said, go to the office. I said, no. And then I went to my next class. That's it. That's the end of the story. Nothing else happened. So, I didn't even get in trouble. They didn't even call my motherfucking... I said dildo one time in class. Whole world knew about it. I killed somebody. Ooh, sorry. I killed somebody. Nobody fucking knows about it. Except for the people that I told. Which was everybody. But, regardless, if you're a fool, you can get away with anything. So... I wanna I wanna do a little uh I wanna do a little drop link drop here. A fucking I'm I'm gonna drop these links in the description. I gotta find these videos, I'm gonna put up the video so that even more people can watch you fucking get dropped on your fucking face. J Bone here got dropped during drill and it made it on like army fails or whatever. Army what the fuck moments. Army what the fuck moments. And ladies and gentlemen, it's absolutely fucking hilarious. So I'm gonna drop the link to that. I su- highly suggest you go check that out. And the other thing, Justin, do you remember this? There's a video, it's still out there, uh, when you took that guitar and I had you smash it over my head. No, you smashed it over my head. Oh no, you smashed it over my head. You no. smashed it over my nope. head. Nope, I'm dropping the link down below. You smashed it over my head, bro. I, I bet you a thousand dollars says you smashed it over my head. All right, bro, we're gonna look it up right after this. Cause I went. Cause afterwards. and everybody else who's listening to this right now is gonna like fucking see. They're, gonna, they're not even gonna have to Google this shit. Cause I'm gonna drop the link down below, and they're gonna see you. If you see the tall, skinny, goofy looking motherfucker with the chipped tooth, that's Joy J Bone. If you see the fucking rosy cheek, baby face, fucking white boy getting with the, uh, his fucking head smashed with a guitar, that's me. We're both Portuguese. Why are you white and I'm not? Because I'm Irish and French too. I don't know why. Look, I got fucking orange in my beard, bro. I got. And so do I. Dude. I got yellow in my beard. I got orange. That's, you can see little orange hairs, dude. Oh, get the fuck out of here! That's with that rage, shit, I dude. think, though. That's just. <laughs> I think that's just, that's just me going Super Saiyan little at a time. <laughs> right, I'm getting there, dude. Eventually. Um. I wish I could get Super Saiyan enough for my hair to grow. So, no, nah, Justin. But do you remember that though? Obviously not, because you think that you got hit over the. I fucking got head. hit over the fucking. I can still feel it. Dude. No, what you. Mean? <laughs> You hit me on the head. Oh. Oh, what, motherfucker? (laughs) Who smokes weed here? Me or you? You know what? It might be. It might. I might have smashed it over your fucking head. No, not might have. You smashed that motherfucker over my head. Yeah, you know what? Now it's all coming back to that me, was ladies like and gentlemen. 11 I'm so glad that we didn't shake too. on this bed. <laughs> yeah, you owe me a thousand bucks. Now. Bullshit! I don't got a thousand I'll bucks. Take... I. You wouldn't even take seven dollars for the pack of cigarettes, you fucking piece of shit. We'll start there with the seven bucks <laughs> <laughs> payments. Um, seven bucks a year. No, you're right because no, I remember now. I remember hitting you. I forgot. Justin's right. J Bone's right. I hit him, and it didn't break the first time. And I was like, "Oh shit!" And I was laughing my ass off. And then you were like, "Nah, do it again. Do it harder." And then I fucking did, dude. And that shit yeah, busted. And the first time it didn't break, and I remember you saying, "Oh man, it didn't break." Uh, dude, I've watched yeah. that video more times yeah. than you can imagine. Okay, all right, all right. So, you know what else I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a link to? Fucking past the horny, dude. It, Ladies and gentlemen, it's a, it's it's horrible video quality and you can't see shit, but it's fucking... It's fucking... It's pretty funny. It's eye-opening is what it is. Yeah, it's, it's eye-opening. Past the horny joined us for a little bit tonight. But, um, yeah, man. I don't know. I appreciate you fucking... I appreciate you coming on here. I guess we're going to wrap it up now or very soon because I do want to chill with you for a little bit before I bring you back, but I don't want to bring you back like super duper late. I mean, so, I don't give a shit, dude. Whatever. Uh, it's already one. So, yeah. Jeff so, looks tired. Well, yeah. No, we're, we're... I mean, we stay up late usually anyways, but just a matter of like bringing you... I mean, dude... You know, I live in Rhode Island, bro, and I gotta freaking drive 15 minutes away, so might as well be in fucking the Sahara, dude. You know what I mean? Mm. 15 minutes is like, it's mad far, kid. Yeah? W- wicked far. Dude, in Wisconsin, everything's like six minutes away. Dude, so, in Wisconsin, let's talk about that before we wrap up here. You're here for, quote unquote, the holidays, right? Mm-hmm. Again, breaking all the violations, you're fucking meeting up. For gatherings, even though you're not supposed to, because you're a piece of shit, you couldn't just fucking zoom call your mother. Oh, dude, I'm gonna be the reason for the end of the world, dude. That's yeah, it. 
Yeah, that's your. Oh, goal. dude, I'll I'll take credit for it, dude. I'll be like Will Smith walking around with a dog, dude. Fuck that's him. your. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, dude. What do you mean? That's your goal, right? Hell yeah, dude. I'm trying to clean this place up, dude. I'm trying to trying clean to house. Clean, trying to clean up, except the only dude. problem is all the fucking rich motherfuckers are going to be already fucking vaccinated. No, I'm going to sneeze. Souped up on their steroids and fucking... I'm going to sneeze on the first motherfucker I see wearing a nice suit, dude. I don't care. Dude, it's going to be like some kid coming from his sister's fucking wedding. That's all right. He'll be violating the laws, too. He deserves it, dude. Fuck it, dude. So, Wisconsin, right? Does any... Other than pointing out the fact that you're brown, even though you're white... <laughs> Does anybody uh, ever, like, notice your accent? Oh, dude, that's all they talk about. And it's fucked up because they all sound like a bunch of dirty Canadians up there. Really? Yeah, dude, they all have that stupid Canadian accent. Oh, hey, how you doing? Hey, like, shut the fuck up, dude. All right, you gonna talk shit about my accent. At least our accent is original. It doesn't sound like the fucking generic version of Canada. Well, Boston, Boston, New England accent does kind of sound a lot similar to New York, but it's different though. Well, that's what I mean. It's, but like, it's, di- it's different though. We don't sound like fucking Canadians, and we don't sound like we have you know like the South, like a bunch of fucking hicks. Dude, what about people from like New Orleans? New Orleans. Nah. I've never been to New Orleans, nah. so I don't fucking know what those nah. idiots sound like. All I know is, dude, you go anywhere in the world, anywhere, not the world, but anywhere in the country. You go anywhere in the country, and people are going to be like, oh, you have a Boston accent, right? Mm-hmm. A fucking, somebody from Minnesota, or Wisconsin, or m- fucking Michigan, they're going to be like, either your bitch ass is from up north, or Canada. And nobody gives a fuck about anybody from up north or Canada. They don't have anything cool up there. Cheese? Like, all right, yeah, hey, cool, cheese. They got socialized healthcare, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> nobody kidding. gives a fuck about those guys. I don't give a fuck about those guys. They got was, maple syrup too, bro. No, Vermont has maple syrup. <laughs> Michigan, Wisconsin, straight, they don't have shit, dude. Straight from the tap. They literally don't have fucking anything. They have one strip club within like hour of another strip club. So like, would a road would a road trip in Michigan be considered like going to like Detroit or where you are at? It would probably be going to like fucking Green Bay or some shit, Kenosha. It's, um, <laughs> dude, I actually had a pass through Kenosha, literally in the middle of all that shit happening, but, um, it's right up north of the Great Lakes, there's 10,000 people that live in the town that I was in, 10,000, 3,000 to went to my high school, 3,000 kids were in my high school, I was living in a town with 10,000 people, a third of that town would have been in my high school, that's fucking insane. In, 10, your, in your high school or in your high school, your graduating class? No, my high school was 3,000 people. In my, The girl that I was fucking around with, one of the girls, she had um, 12 people in her graduating class. I had 900. 12 people in her graduated class? That is literally half of a that class. That sounds like the saddest graduation day ever. <laughs> like, no, no, yeah! no, 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 no. That's the best graduation ever. That shit was probably 10 minutes long. Yeah, no shit. They're like, all right. No, they probably dragged it out with, like, fucking a band marching and shit. Half the class is in the band. When you have time to say their middle names. When you have time to say That's their how you know middle. it's a good graduation. <laughs> this motherfucker. Oh, this is why I love you, Justin. See, this is what... This is, we should have been talking more about shit like this than all that fucking They just said last shit. names in my graduation. You know how many fucking D'Souza's D- there were? D'Souza. D'Souza J. J-U. <laughs> Dude, there was, like, four D'Souza's. None related. Oh, you know, all right. So, I know that not. I know that uh, th- this isn't reaching fucking worldwide audiences here. But if you've never uh, met a Portuguese person in your life, the w- the way you know that you're in a, a group of Portuguese people, just call out the name João, or José, or or Manny, or Manuel, and oh my God, just watch the heads turn, dude. Excuse me. Excuse you. Is right. Bless you. All right, dude. So. Guess we'll wrap this up here. I uh, I love you, J Bone, and I'm so glad that we could do this. This is only my third podcast ever because kind of sucks just sitting here talking by myself, dude. Like that's why one one other podcast was with Danny D. The first one, second one, I only literally only did like maybe 25 minutes. It was by myself because uh, I don't know when I'm just talking, I feel like I'm being way more. Um, like dictate, dictate, dictatorial. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Well, we'll do some. We'll do another one where it's a little bit less uh, political and more. Yeah, no, humorous. We did a we did a good job. I mean, um, 
We can always do another one tomorrow if you want or whatever. That's yeah, that's yeah. cool. Fucking. Oh, this is fun, dude. This was, was funnier than I thought it was gonna be. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Oh good. I'm glad that I'm glad that you uh, had a good time, bro. Seriously. I don't mind helping people out with their arts. Yeah. No. Seriously. If you wanted dude. to paint me naked, you could too. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Rose. Yeah, All right. I'll go full Titanic so, on your ass. I was just gonna say, so real quick, actually, I was about to wrap this up, but a little little I quick thing. So, I I was about to wrap it up, but. I just want to tell this quick story. My wife has actually never seen the Titanic, bro. What the fuck? Good. She's... I had a fuck a bitch one time, right? And she wouldn't let me fuck her until the Titanic was over. Oh, yeah, you told me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know how stressful that was? Dude, <laughs> I've never wanted to lean out of the crapio to die so dude. fast in my fucking life, dude. Dude, and those, and those fucking sex scenes were, uh, well, whatever, like, they were, uh, not, they were steamy. <laughs> Dude, I had a boner so, for four that's, hours. That's, dude. What I was, that's what I was getting at. I was like, you're probably getting real fucking antsy during this. Dude, I was ready up. to jerk off to the ship sinking. The ship, the ship's going up, fucking out of the water. You're like, yeah, yeah, and then it breaks in half. You're like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> that ship standing up straight like that in the water was my cock the entire time I was cuddling with this bitch. And like, she wasn't an ugly chick either. Like, if it was like an ugly chick, all right, Did, whatever. All right. Well, the, the bottom line is, does she least, least let you smash when the credits rolled? Dude, she fucking, as soon as that movie ended, as soon as Jack's bitch ass sunk to the bottom of the ocean, dude. Your dick was already in her. She was already having my kid, dude, by that time. <laughs> dude, I was fucking. Dude, how many, how many, never mind. How many what? Go ahead. How many of your unborn children do you think girls have, have swallowed? <laughs> Dude, so after Chelsea had a seizure while blowing me, dude, I've tried to stay away from the whole blowjob thing. Like, dude, I shit you not. Dude, I fucking, dude, I get so nervous during blowjobs. So nervous. Dude. Yeah, but it's you like, said she was toothy anyways, no? Yeah, dude, she was. Dude, that bitch. I'm afraid at this point a girl's going to sneeze or something stupid's going to happen. She dude. had a seizure with your cock in her mouth, dude, biting down. <laughs> she didn't bite down. She was courteous enough to fucking pull it out. But I'll tell you what, dude, if she had not been like that. Now, dude, I saw talking to a girl the other day on Facebook, and she's like talking to me. She's like, oh, I got all these health issues. I'm like, all right, maybe this girl has like fucking scoliosis or something like, okay. Whatever, her back's fucked up. She no. said epilepsy. Epilepsy, dude. Immediately, first thing on the list, epilepsy. You start having like, flashbacks. No thanks, <laughs> bud. Sorry. Fucking Justice, I was having flashbacks. Dude, like, I feel like he was in fucking numb. And dude, these girls talk about <laughs> epilepsy like it's a fucking rare thing, but I don't know if it's me, because the fucking kid that I killed had epilepsy. Yo. Fucking Chelsea had epilepsy. Right. Tell me this, tell me this. 100%, be honest with me right now. How many girls you been with that say they see ghosts, dude. Oh man, that's a weird question. That's quite a few. Why? Because <laughs> I fucking knew it, dude. Because I feel, I always feel like there's that, like not even. It, almost dude. like you said, like it's rare. Like you feel like it's rare. Like oh, I, I, see, I see dead people. Like and it's like yeah. So like fucking every girl in my middle school. Dude, I am not lying to you, dude. I took this bitch to a date to the zoo. And they had a sky, uh, what's it called, a ski lift that goes across the zoo. Okay. So I'm up there with this girl on the ski lift. This bitch looks me dead in the eyes, dude. And tells me she's a vampire. <laughs> Middle of the While day. While you're dude, trapped I'm looking, on the lift. I'm her. looking dead. So, dude, my she's staring at your fucking neck pulsating. My, right. And this girl's kind of hot. So I was like, all right, she's a vampire. Like, whatever, dude. I know how to kill a vampire. I've watched enough Supernatural to know. We'll keep we'll keep rolling with this and see where it leads. If shit gets fucking weird, then we'll do what we gotta do. My, I had two motherfucking options. Get turned, end up like fucking Edward's bitch ass. This is the option she laid out for you? No, 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 no. Oh. This is what was going on in my head. Or drop 30 feet into the rhino's fucking cage. Because that's where I was looking the rhino dead in the eyes. As she was After she looked at me, I looked at the rhino. And even he was like... Nigga, you should come down here because... I'm coming, bro. Like, those are my options. Drop 30 feet into the rhino cage or get my fucking so, neck sucked by this crazy bitch. So you've been with vampires, ghost whisperers. All right, let's see. What else can I name on the bingo? I'm, I'm doing pretty good with the bingo card. Well, oh, I just said ghost whisperer. You said the vampire. Here's the worst part. How this. many times have you gotten into a fight in a Bigfoot costume? <laughs> One time. Only one time, unfortunately. We'll talk more about that on the next episode. So, here's the worst part about that date. It was not... It was a good... It was all right. 
I think I didn't even get a fucking kiss with this bitch. Right? She's like, let's go back to the car and smoke weed. I said, I don't smoke. And she said, well, that's fine. I'll smoke. I said, all right, cool, whatever. Went back to the car, smoked weed, whatever. We went on the fucking thing. She was like, I'm a vampire. Blah, blah, blah. That rhino was my friend. You're saying like, all kinds of crazy shit. You're like, this right? bitch is high. Dude, I met this bitch at a Wendy's. She lived next door to the Wendy's. Right? I lived 20 minutes from her work and her house, work, which were in the same vicinity. You could literally piss from her work to her house, right? She worked at the Wendy's? Two o'clock, yeah. I got her number because she liked my shirt. Two o'clock in the morning, this bitch gives me a call when I have a house full of guests and asks me to give her a ride home from work. I lived 20 minutes from where she lived, right? So I asked, well, if I'm driving all that way, do I at least get a kiss goodnight? Texting her. And she's like, We'll talk when you come pick me up. I said, no, 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 bitch. I ain't falling for that. She's like, I have a fucking boyfriend. This is the vampire bitch? Vampire bitch has okay. a boyfriend. So she's a succubus. Oh, dude, she, apparently Edward was waiting by, for her back at home. This nigga couldn't have picked her up. Dude, 20 minutes. It literally would take her a minute and a half to walk to her house. I was just about to say, so you're saying that she literally wanted you to give her a ride, like, up the street? Like, basically, when I worked at Combi's, like that? Yes. Oh, my God. That close, dude. Less Where I can see it outside my bedroom window. You could measure the distance from her work to her house in feet. Like, not miles, not kilometers. So did you... Feet. So did you go? Fuck no, I didn't go, dude. She had a boyfriend and she wasn't trying to smash, dude. I'm not driving all that way for fucking what? Like... Bitch. Oh, J-Bone. That's J-Bone. It's such a short ride, I can't even ask her for gas money. You know, what am I asking for, a nickel? Like, no. It's like... Why? You can't even... If you called an Uber for that shit, he would be mad at you. Dude, I... All right. You want to hear a story? I, I drove Uber for one day. Okay? I actually made pretty decent money. And it was cool, because you could, like... I could... I came home, and I smoked and shit. And then I went back on the road, and then I ended up picking up a girl in Barrington, driving her to Providence, and then, forget about it, dude, it was like a Friday night, I think, and it was just popping off, dude, so I, like, next thing you know, it was like, bing, 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 picking up people from the clubs and bringing them to the east side of Providence, bringing them from the east side of Providence to the Brown campus, basically, and then bringing them from fucking Brown and RISD back to, uh, to the clubs, like, you know what I mean? Literally, I dropped someone off at the club, and then, like, someone else, like, I'd have a ride right there, and then they'd hop in the car. I'd be like, whoa, what the fuck? Um, anyways, uh, earlier that day when I was still in Bristol, I, do, I drove someone two streets away. Like, I know you don't know the area, but literally, they're, both of the roads are off of Medicom, and they're, like, you can see one road from the other road. Was it like a fucking four dollar drive ride? Two dollars. Ten dollars. Ten bucks? Ten dollars. It cost him ten dollars, dude. I think I got like, I think I got like four or something like that, or like six or whatever they keep like 40 percent or some shit jesus christ dude that's fucking 10 bucks for that shit dude this bitch i like she even if she had a boyfriend she could at least cheated on him for a ride like i mean i've had girls do that before dude this fucking guy i had this one girl she was like can you give me a ride in new bedford i was like i don't know it's a far drive i gotta drive an hour to you and then i mean a half an hour to you then a half an hour to new bedford then a half an hour back it's an hour and a half of my time like i'm like fucking chilling at home in my pajamas so said, I'll blow you if you give me a ride. Again, I was a little sketched out. I don't like really like blowjobs. They kind of scare the shit out of me. But I fucking did it. I didn't really want to, but... Right, I mean, I was like, alright, whatever. So, the next time I hung out with her, she's like, bring me to my boyfriend's house. She gives me the address. The address is already in my phone. I'm like, what the fuck? Why is this address already in my phone? Because that's what you brought her the last time. So I'm driving... And I'm like, dude, this looks awfully familiar. <laughs> this bitch blew me for a ride to her boyfriend's house. Nice. And then she went, walked in there and kissed him. Nice. That's great. Legendary. Oh Legendary slut. I yeah. didn't know she had a boyfriend at the time. All right. Hang on. All right. All right. But I'll definitely do Before it Before you again. keep incriminating fucking random women of the night, <laughs> let's, uh, let me, let me see if I can hit another bingo card here. All right. Hmm. Having multiple kids is too easy. That's just way too easy. Married, multiple kids. No, no, no. Hang on. Let me guess. Let me guess, bro. I'm having fun with this. I'm having okay. a good time here. Um, hmm. I want to think of a good one. 
like Ghost Whisperer. Like that was that you're right, that was like totally random, but thank you, Jennifer Love Hewitt, for giving me the idea. I appreciate it. Alright. You ever been with a girl who's had who had said she had sexual relations with someone she was related with? Almost. I was talking to this chick that Shit. fucked that used to bang her dad. That's what I was going for. Something like that. Something along those lines. <laughs> that almost, almost. I, dude, I can't even really talk about that at all. All right, all. that's fine. But wait, so, let me think. Then again, you could have been with one and not even known. So. Right, yeah, that's true. I mean, I mean, usually bitches. But like you said, people open up to you, so I figured, you know what I mean? I, I didn't know. All right, hang on. One more, one more, and then we'll fucking wrap this bad boy up. I'm, I'm trying to go for the fucking the sweep here, dude. I'm trying to go for the Jeopardy. Just go the whole row, dude. All right. I got to think of something good, though. It's got to be something... Specific? Pacific? Yeah, something very, very specific, dude. Come on, now. I once fucked this chick that I'm pretty sure broke into the house that we were fucking in. You mean, like, you guys broke in there together to fuck? Well, not you guys, bro. I was... Were you fucking her from outside? No, 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 no. I wa- So, this girl says... I got a dog watch. I said, all right. So we get to the house. There's no dog. <laughs> but there, were, there were dogs. We go to the house, and she can't find the fucking key. Right? So she's like, oh, I can't find the fucking key. I said, all right. Well, I had just met this chick. I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. So met this bitch at FYE. Super cute chick. This old dude was hitting on her. So I started like... Talking to the old dude to kind of divert him away from her. Then I started flirting with her, you know. And then whatever, we hit it off. We hung out. She got a drink. We made out a little bit. That's a beta move, bro. Whatever, dude. I don't (laughs) give a fuck. I was trying to get some pussy, dude. I actually had to go back into the store to buy some Dragon Ball lights just to talk to her again. But anyways, we get in her car. We're making out. She's like, oh, I want to hang out. I got to go get a tattoo. I'm like, all right. Thinking she's going to go to a tattoo parlor. Kind of didn't really take in the fact it was like 8 o'clock at night. We get to the sketchy crack house. She's like, oh, okay, this is it. We go into this house. This dude has a fucked up hand, like a strong hand. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, I really hope that's not the guy tattooing her. It was. <laughs> Luckily, he was a righty. <laughs> so, we get in there. This girl doesn't say anything about her tattoo. What she's getting, where she's getting it, nothing. Lays across my lap, whips her ass out, and... Just gets cherries tattooed on her ass. Okay. This is my first... I've known this girl for about 45 minutes at this point. So whatever. She gets cherries tattooed on her ass. She drives us back to the mall where her cars were. I'm like sitting in her car making out with her still, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, oh, she starts talking to me about shit. Shit that I'll tell you later. And then she's like, I gotta go dog watch. I'm gonna sleep there for the night. Do you want to come? I said, sure. We get to this house beautiful fucking house right like rich white person house clearly she's like going through the lamp looking under the mat looking under rocks can't find the fucking key she's like i can't find the key all right like, well you want to just leave she's like no don't worry about it okay i hear her sneakily walk across the house I hear the window slide open then i hear a loud crash she comes over, <laughs> unlocks the door, hair's all fucked up, lets me in, takes a knife, goes into this drawer, wiggles it around, unlocks this drawer, pulls a bottle of alcohol out. She knew where the alcohol was, so I'm pretty sure she knew these people. She goes, when we go in the kitchen, you have to hide behind the island because her grandparents live behind the house and they can't know you're here. My thought process is, if her grandparents live behind the house, why the fuck can't they watch the dogs? mm so, she's like, oh, no, don't worry about it. Takes this bottle, cracks it open, chugs the whole fucking thing. I'm like, damn, I'm not that ugly. But anyways, we go upstairs. Rich, fucking beautiful house. We go into this room. It's her friend's bedroom. Air mattress. Not a regular mattress. A fucking $20 Walmart air mattress. I don't know why this bitch had an air mattress when she was living in this, like, $2 million home. Fuck the shit out of her, whatever. She's like, wakes up the next day, fuck her again. Leaves a complete fucking mess, and we just fucking leave. 
Doesn't lock the door. None of that shit. Craziness, dude. Never talk to me again. She fucked me the night before. Fucked me the next day. So the night, the first night must have been good if she let me smash the next time. And then after that, I would go into FYE. She wouldn't look at me. She would run in the back room, try to hide from this me. This girl worked at FYE too? This is the same girl. Why are you picking up? A, I th- Yeah, but I thought the girl that we met at FYE, I thought she just happened to be at FYE. I know she worked at FYE. Same yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, She worked there. Oh. Yeah, I went back inside. I, I, I missed that part. I bought some Dragon Ball Z lights, Christmas oh, lights. Oh, that's why you had to go back in there to buy. I get it now. Right. And I get I was it. like. I thought you bought them to oppress her. Like, look, no, I got no, Dragon no. Ball lights. She's, no, like, I walked she's in like, like, I definitely want to smash now. Yo. I walked in there and was like, yo, I'm really only buying these because I want to get your number. And she's like, you could have just asked for my number. And I was like, I also really want these lights. <laughs> Like, no, but I'll, I'll take the lights, too. <laughs> dude, my dates so, always go fucking crazy, dude. Like, they're always stupid. They can't just be a normal fucking walk in the zoo. They gotta be some crazy bullshit. Like, that one time, the first time I met this... First time I fucked the chick that made me watch the Titanic. She has two kids. One has a dead father. The other one has a live father. One's white, one's black. We're not gonna get into that. This bitch is talking to me. We're making out, talking to me. She leaves... She comes back. She, I'm going to get into something more comfortable. Leaves for like a half an hour. She's probably watching her kids. She comes back. She's wearing just a t-shirt. Crying. She's wearing the dead baby daddy t-shirt. Rest in peace. Philip, whatever this dude's name was. I don't know what the fuck his name with is. With a picture on it? With a picture on it. And this motherfucker smiling with a thumbs up. And I'm like, dude, I'm definitely not getting late. Then we start making out more. I'm like, well, maybe I'm still going to get late. Say, hey, can you, like, take the fucking shirt off? She's like, oh, no, I'm embarrassed about my body. It's like, all right, first of all, I drove fucking here at 12 o'clock at night because I want to smash. Obviously, I like your body. Second of all, I don't want this motherfucker staring me in the face while I'm fucking you. If we're gonna, we're gonna have to do it doggy style because I feel guilty. Come on, bro. You didn't want him to be fucking smiling at you, giving you a dumb thumbs up while you're looking down on her? It is. While she's riding you? Dude, it's very (laughs) hard to keep a boner when this dude's giving you a thumbs up the whole time. If it was one of my bros, like, if she just... Not like a dead bro. That's like, what I was just thinking. Up. I was like, you're fucked like, up, dude. Like, well, like, you know. Like, just oh, nice. T-shirt. Now I can move in, dude. Right. <laughs> like, if she just had a t-shirt of, like, one of my bros, like, hey, what's up? All right, yeah, cool. I didn't know this motherfucker from a hole in the wall. His motherfucking kid was downstairs, sleeping, doing whatever the fuck. And this bitch refused to take the shirt off because she was embarrassed by her tits. Like, I have never seen a pair of tits where I'm like, well, that's not good. Put those things away. I mean, I can't say that, but very rare. <laughs> talking, to, he's talking to you, mom. No, just kidding. The second time I go to this bitch's house, she has one of her kids there. The other kid is with, you know, the other kid has a father, so the other kid is with the father. She has one kid there. We're messing around in the living room. She's like, "Let's go upstairs to my bedroom." I'm like, "All right." Thinking her bedroom was gonna be vacant. I go up there. I throw her on the bed. The blankets move. There's a big bundle of hair in the blankets. I'm already naked. My dick's out already. This is probably going to incriminate the shit out of me. I'm like, I'm not having sex with your kid in the bed. She's like, oh, she's sleeping. She's sleeping? She's nine. I don't care. She's not a baby. She was a baby. Like, all right, push the baby. Put it in the fucking crib. We can do it. This bitch was nine years old. Nine. Yeah, she could wake up at any point and fucking... Right. Just lay there and, like, be, like, afraid to, like, Dude. move or say anything or fucking... So I had to fucking bang her in our kid's room on a bunk bed. Oh, that doesn't sound like the worst fucking thing in the world. Well, no, but if you're 6'2", it kind of sucks and it's kind of hard, you know what I mean? Well, maybe you shouldn't be so tall, you piece of shit. I know, dude. My... But, like, I'm not really, like, a... You know, my moral compass is a little fucked up, but I'm not gonna fuck somebody in front of a nine-year-old kid. That's illegal. Like, Chris Hansen could have came out of nowhere and be like, what are you doing here? All right, all right, I got one. I got one. Now, this one, this is going to be my last my last swing here, okay? You ever been with a girl that's been gangbanged? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> so, which one? <laughs> I've been with girls I wanted to be gangbanged. I've been with girls that have been gangbanged. I've also double teamed a chick twice. Two chicks in one week. Same person, same friend. 
Um, I'm trying to think of who's specific. I th- actually think the the dead baby daddy Titanic bitch has been gang banged a couple of times. Besides she that, got, the dead one was part of one of those gang bangs. That's how she got I think up. yeah, dude, it could have been. Um, the Fye chick said she was. Oh Jesus! All right, that wasn't that wasn't a good one. Okay, so we're at a minute forty here. That's absolutely fucking beautiful because. We have a minute and 40 left? No, we're at a minute and... Uh, uh, an hour 40, sorry. We're at an hour and 40 here. That's a long time. So uh, we're going to wrap it up now. We'll, we'll If you do want to do one tomorrow, we can do one tomorrow too. That'd be fucking dope. Um, you know, if you did if you did like this and you had a good time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been the Irrelevant Podcast with DQ. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm here with J-Bone, who hopefully we'll have on again. And, um, yeah... Thank you so much, J-Bone. No problem, kid. All right, guys. Hope you have a good night. Be safe out there.